Hey, James Neenheis again with my friend Brittany, and she has a question for me about uh, biblical history as it compares with Darwinian history. Uh, Brittany, what question do you have this time for me, please? Since the Great Pyramid of Giza is aligned to true north, not magnetic north, then how did the ancients do it without ET assistance? Yes, you know, the, the sides, the east-west sides of the Great Pyramid, uh, Pyramid of Giza, miraculously, uh, the Darwinists even say it had to have been by extraterrestrial assistance and teaching. The sides are aligned directly to true north, directly to the North Pole, along the longitude lines. Not to magnetic north, which is 16 degrees to the east of true north. The magnetic north compasses point to magnetic north, 16 degrees east of the true North Pole, because of dense iron material up there in the northern shield of Canada. Uh, 16 degrees northeast, so compass point that direction. But the Great Pyramid is aligned to true north, where the longitude lines on a globe that you'll see merge at the North Pole. So how did they achieve this? Well, longitude lines can only be determined by being able to measure east-west distances. The distance between the longitude lines as they, uh, they uh, 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 come together approaching the North Pole. So you have to be able to measure time in order to measure east-west distances. Latitudes, north-south distances, they can be measured by where the sun rises on the horizon on a given day during the year. You know, okay, it's this day of the year, there's the sun rising. So from that, it, you know, sun rises in the east, uh, sets in the west. So from that, you can determine your latitude, your north-south directions, but to measure east-west distances, uh, you have to be able to measure time. Currently, we measure time by measuring accurately solar time, uh, the time that it takes for the sun to, trans, tr to uh, go across the sky or to go uh, for the earth to circle the, the sun. But uh, in ancient times, they didn't have the, the mechanics to be able to do that. So in ancient times, they used a different uh, uh, method for measuring time. They actually measured the wobble rate of the earth's axis. While the Earth spins as it uh, rotates around the sun, while it's spinning once per day, it's slowly wobbling like a gyroscope in space. Its Earth axis is slowly wobbling. 72 years it takes for the Earth's axis to wobble one degree. So the ancients were aware of this slow wobble rate. So all that they did, they took a hexagon, a six-sided figure, a six-sided polygon, and laid it in, within the circle of the Earth, if you will, where the equator is, with the axis of the Earth rotating at this rate. So once they measured one side by this slow rate, one side of the six-sided figure, they thereby knew the radius length of the Earth. So of course, when you know the radius length of the Earth, you can calculate the, the diameter, it's double the radius, multiply that by pi, 3.14, blah, 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 on out, and you know the cir circumference length of the Earth. So the ancients were able to measure and map the Earth in ancient times. Unthinkable to the Darwinists, yet but proven by the maps of the ancient sea kings by Hapgood, H-A-P-G-O-O-D, Google that up. Uh, it's commonly thought that the Russians were first to discover Antarctica, the South Pole, the continent of the South Pole, thought to have been first discovered by the Russians in 1818. But here we have these medieval maps noted by Charles Hapgood, and the map makers, these medieval map makers, such as Arontius Phineas and Piri Reyes, said on their own maps that their source maps were far ancient, more ancient source maps. And some of these source maps showed Antarctica with remarkable accuracy of the shorelines and even the mountain ranges on Antarctica, which are currently under thousands of feet of snow, which proves that those navigators around 2000 BC, which actually was during the Ice Age, actually early in the Ice Age, before the snow had built up on Antarctica. Of course, the Ice Age having been caused by the warmer ocean immediately after Noah's flood. So within 50 years after Noah's flood, they were navigating all around the world by this mapping method, by the slow wobble rate, which they knew, 72 years per degree, a base six number, the slow wobble rate of the Earth's axis. And if, if you go to the Foundation website and look under category Earth Measured Geometry, we'll see, you'll see the numbers about all this. And they just happen to be the same numbers of our nautical mile mapping system, base six, 60 arc seconds, arc, arc minutes, arc seconds, et al. So it's an ancient technology 
an ancient mapping method, but the ancients used a slower rate of time measure, the slow wobble rate of the Earth's axis. And that explains how in the centuries after Noah's flood, which was during the Ice Age, the Ice Age followed Noah's flood, they were settling all over the world, which makes it completely plausible, as Genesis 10 says, that the humankind moved out and settled into all the world. Darwinists can't explain it, the biblical model can. Tune into the next presentation, The Science of the Future, old school, man.